Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to show you a quick technique that you can use with the flash ambient blend that I've covered in other videos and in my interiors book but this time to do something very very rapid. Now in the past I've shown how to do a fast flambient with uh, doing a luminosity mask. In this case there's some rooms that you really don't have to go that far with. Now there's uh, that case of using fast flambient where you can get uh, a lot of a that mix of you know the flash and the ambient together. Um, obviously if you're using a real stellar room, something that has window pulls and a great view and, and something that you really want a lot of control on, flash ambient is a great way to go. But if you move into some of the bathrooms, some of the smaller rooms, some of the simple bedrooms, some of the stuff that you really don't want to take a lot of time on, then this is an alternative that you can do something with very quick. We're talking just seconds of processing time. So I'm going to show you a few examples of how that works. And I want to emphasize something that uh, I point out also in my fourth book on the business techniques is that when you're setting prices on how much effort it takes to do your work, it's not all based off of just everything's flash ambient. Based off of how your market responds to the prices and the amount of effort, the level of effort that I talk about in the book, to calculate those prices, your area might not support the high price to say, you know what, we're going to provide 25 flash ambient blended photos, but it, maybe it can provide provide two or three stellar flash ambient photos and then using a technique like this which I call the 50-50 by the way you can then bring in some other really good pictures which aren't all ambient they're not HDR they're not flash you're gonna get something that looks very realistic and using some of the presets that I talk about in the books you're still gonna get some stunning photos so I've got four different examples I'm gonna run through I'm gonna show you how to put that into a Photoshop action to make this extremely quick using what I call the 50-50 technique for rapid interior processing. Ready to take a look at it? Let's take a look. So let's take a look at this first example and this is a, a very simple kitchen. Um, it's not every house that I shoot is uh, exactly a multi-million dollar estate. But this is kind of typical of what you'd find on MLS. Somebody needs to sell this house. And the ambient shot of it, yeah, you can see how it's got some stuff that's blown out. I've got a fairly good looking histogram as we can see up here on the right. What I talk about in the interiors book is being right of center. When I put in the flash shot then, of course, to get the correct colors, to get everything going on uh, correctly, I can see somewhat of a view outside. It still looks too flashy. Now, once again, I'm right of center on the histogram, just like I talk about throughout the uh, interiors book. So this is looking pretty good, and this would be an ideal candidate for the flash ambient blend to bring the, the best of both worlds together. Now, the one thing to bear in mind, this doesn't need a window pull. Now, some of the view is showing outside just because of the speed that I shot at. So using about 1 80th of a second at ISO 320 and uh, what was about to F7.1, this was enough to uh, show that view outside. But anyways, this is a very simple shot that I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time doing flash ambient blending because we do have a pretty even mix and this is something important to watch out for. We've got this mix of ambient that's fairly even when you compare it to then what the flash would be. So anyways, let's go ahead. I've done all the geometry on this. All I'm going to do now is bring these into layers as Photoshop. With both of them selected, you can go all P, E, O, O, and that'll open as layers in Photoshop. Now, you could also right click on those and I show that in a lot of other videos. But when you're really speeding through the post processing workflow, sometimes these keyboard shortcuts really do help. That's something that I uh, have a table on in the uh, advanced editing book. But anyways, Alt P E O O brings those up here. Now, what I'm going to do, if I were to do this 50-50 blend, I would hit in my case the F7 key and I'm done. Basically that blended, if we take a look at what happened, I have an action, I'm going to show you how to make that, where it turned that uh, ambient shot into luminosity mode, you can see over here, and dropped the opacity to 50%. That's all there was to it. So how did that happen? How do we make that action? Let's go back to where we were. This was in normal mode and it was 100%. So just like I show making other actions in other videos and also in the, in the advanced editing book, what you want to first do is bring up your action window. There's a little play button if you've got it there. If not, it's under window and then actions. So I'm going to bring it up this way. I've got it uh, locked over here on the, uh, the bar over here. 
So there's my uh, Flambient 5050 that's assigned to the F7 key. I'm going to make a new one and I'm just going to call it 5050 for this tutorial. So the first thing we do, like on any other uh, action, is you create a new action by clicking this little icon. And we'll call this then the uh, 5050 toot for our tutorial. I'm going to then set the function key of F8 to it and say record. Now it's recording the actions I need to do and it's very simple. I'm going to change the blending mode to luminosity and I'm going to change then the opacity down to 50%, right about there. Okay, and then that's it. Now I just stop the recording and now it's made my 5052. To make this work, then you have to close the document that you're working with, so close that out, and then we'll open it again. So we go Alt P E O O open those two layers in Photoshop. And this is another advantage of doing your uh, ambient shots first is that that layer will then always be on top. Makes it a lot faster. There's little rearranging than you have to do four layers. So anyways, we don't need that window up. So all that I have to do now is that we assigned it to the F8 key. All I have to do is hit F8 and boom, there we go. I've got the blend. So then we just go layer flatten, just like we would any other uh, process that we would be doing here, whether it was full flash ambient, whether it was fast flambient or doing the 50-50, control S to save it. It goes back into Lightroom, assign one of the uh, presets to it. In this case, I'm going to do the light bump, no vert, and that just goes ahead and sets that to it. So that's not bad looking. You can even tweak it a little bit more with whatever you're doing, but let's just review what happened here. We started with a, an uh, ambient shot that definitely looked like an ambient. Colors were all over the place. So we did our flash shot like normal to get our colors the way we want to, but it looks flashy. Adding then the 50-50 by using the action, we get something that looks like this. So from flash then to something that is then more impactful. So now let's take a look and let's apply that same technique. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one over here, by the way. Let's take something uh, awful. And let's take a look. This right here is, of course, what happens with auto white balance in a lot of cases, which is another reason, reason number 487, why I do not use HDR. Um, but if I do the flash shot of it, we can see this is the correct colors. And of course, this isn't necessarily my taste for the bathroom, but it's something that I need to shoot for a job and I need to make it look the best I can. So to do that, I've got the flash going on. You can actually see a hot spot up here where I'm bouncing it off the ceiling. But for this to get it done really quick, I wanna blend the two together, but I don't wanna spend a lot of time. So we do the 50-50. Grab both of those, Alt P, E, O, O, open those as layers in Photoshop. And all I have to do is hit that F8 key for that action we just made, and we're gonna be pretty much done. You'll see what I mean here in just a second as it loads up. So it brings those layers up. And then all I have to do, I hit F8, and we've got this type of picture. Now, now there's still a hot spot up here a little bit. I'm not really too worried about that for this bathroom. And of course, then we go layer flatten, control S to save it. And when it comes back then into Lightroom, we can apply a bump, like maybe the, the light bump no vert. That looks pretty good. Maybe up the whites a little bit, and we can even change the white balance down to take some of that out. So anyways, that's what it looks like. So not too worried once again about this hot spot, especially for what's being shown up here. It's uh, not necessarily a super rich feature of the house. Um, but what we started with was a, uh, an auto white balanced ambient, which all oh, the lights were blown out, the white balances are all over the place. Did a flash shot to try to get some of the colors back, did a pretty good job. And of course then uh, to fill in stuff, so we don't have those blown out lights at the top and all the other reasons that I mentioned in the interiors book. And when we did our 50-50 with a preset, this is what we have. Let's take a look then at a kitchen. So this isn't just for your standard stuff. Here was a high-end kitchen that I did for a house. It was about a $2.5 million listing uh, out here in the Thousand Oaks area. So this was the ambient shot for it, and then this was the flash shot. Now, once again, there's no window pull. That's the neighbor's house over there. I would never do a window pull for this. I like the idea of the ambient being blown out. So a 50-50 mix fits this really well. If I had done the flash ambient, uh, the fast flambient that I show in the other video, then it would have preserved this view outside. 
we don't need that. We can't just use the ambient though because you can see how blown out the under cabinet light is here and the colors are off which is very typical when shooting just ambient in auto white balance. So grab both of those pictures, Alt P E O O, take those over here into uh, Photoshop as layers and we're just going to apply that 50-50 to it. Now it's good to know what your limits are with this. It's another tool in your toolbox so it's like do I do a full flash ambient? Do I do a fast flash ambient? Do I do a 50-50? Once you get used to seeing which ones work well, it'll come automatic to you. So let's go ahead and just apply our F8 key. That doesn't look too bad. Pretty well evened it out. Now I could add a little bit more in there. I could also adjust the opacity here to say, you know what, I want more ambient in there or I want less ambient in there. So I can adjust that across, but at 50%, that looks pretty good. Semi blew out that window over there. I could probably do it even more and I'm going to show you an example of preserving or taking away a view in the next example. But for here we'd go layer flatten, control S to save it, and then when it comes back into Lightroom we apply a bump to it and we have something that looks pretty good. Not too bad. Maybe uh, bump up the whites a little bit, take up the highlights, and boom we've got something pretty good. Once again we started out with just an ambient shot which looked like this, had blown out parts, colors were way off, the flash didn't do it justice, it looked, it justice, it looked very flashy. In fact, what I used here, a little bonus, my Explore 600 is right behind me, camera right, and then I ran over here with a full power Young Nuo behind the, uh, the island, which is over here, and flashed that to try to fill in some of that. So anyways, our final product though, once we did our 50, 50 in a preset, looks like this. Not too bad. Now for the last example, I want to show you something where I wanted to try to preserve a, a view outside. So not necessarily a window pull worthy flash shot here. And by the way, it wasn't my idea to keep the vacuum cleaner up here and it couldn't come off the wall so it stayed. Anyways, very typical stuff you'll run across doing real estate photography. People don't decorate their houses the way that you would and that's fine. Um, so this is our uh, ambient shot for it. And we can see definitely some very blown out windows and we know going into it, you can just about imagine what's going to happen doing a 50-50 up against this flash shot. But let's take them both in to Lightroom, excuse me, to Photoshop, Alt P, E, O, O, boom, open up his layers as Photoshop. And the technique here, you're going to go, oh, well, of course, it's going to make sense. And some of these things too, it's like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Because a lot of this stuff really is fairly simple. So as this loads up, Let's go ahead and do our F8 key and we've got our 50-50. So that doesn't look too bad, pretty good. But I wanted to preserve more of this view out here. So how would I do that? Very simple. Just go layer, mask, reveal all, and then just take a low flow eraser, or you could take it at 100%, and you just erase where you want. So I'm gonna take that flow down to about 30% on that eraser and then just start erasing some of that out of there. Now, obviously the blinds are getting a little bit darker, but once you blend that in, doing a little bit like that, then you're able to preserve your views a little bit better. So that's what you've got now. So you're just re removing some of that ambient out of there so you get a little bit more of a view. So without the mask in there, it would be like that. With the mask, you've got that. Now, one other thing I would do here, and I'm gonna still show in another video, but this is a little bonus footage for what I would do for this color cast on the ceiling. You ready? Let's grab a polygon tool and let's draw a polygon around that crown molding. You don't have to be accurate at all. Go up here around it, hit control click and that'll fill that in. Okay. And now what you want to do is to feather that. So you go select, modify, and then you feather that by about five pixels, which will blend that in real nicely. And now you just go to a layer and then new adjustment layer, hue saturation layer. And that made a hue saturation layer with a mask that we just outlined and now I can just desaturate. And now we've got that looking more white. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and flatten that. And then we save it. We go back over here into Lightroom and we do our, a bump on it and then this is kind of our final product. Not too bad, maybe up the highlights a little bit. So that's what we have for our final product. Once again, we started with an ambient shot that was 
definitely overblown. You couldn't hardly even see the floor, it was so bright coming through the windows. We had a flash shot that compensated for that, and this is using that two-stop rule that I mentioned in the interiors book, and also the flash settings video here a couple videos back. And then when we blended the two together, doing a 50-50 with a slight modification, this is what we got. So one of the things that's really different from doing HDR. Once you step into using lights and you're using flash ambient blending, the world is kind of your oyster in a way. It's not just taking always an ambient shot and painting that over your flash shot. Sometimes it's doing the fast flambient. Sometimes it's doing something called the 50-50, doing this type of a modification here. These are all just tools in your bag of post-processing tricks to be able to then move through your workflow a little bit easier. Not every room needs to have all the care done with all the special painting that's done on it. Some of it though does to really get the good window pulls. If you're doing composites where you're popping around a whole lot of different uh, flashes and then you want to add ambient to it, there's a lot more work. But sometimes those are just the stellar pictures. So a little secret, one of the things that I do is I go through my stellar shots first. I do grand entrances. I do the big living rooms. I do the great views of the kitchen. I do all those things first. And then I do the bedrooms last. Now the master bedroom may have some special TLC to it, but when it comes to laundry rooms, most bathrooms, the kids' bedrooms and stuff like that, this really works quite well. This is then where also the realtors, they do want something that looks really well, but they don't need something that looks like a million dollar shot for every single powder room, for every single kid's bedroom, especially if it's a teenager's room and if you've shot enough real estate, you know, or you've been a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I hope this video was very useful for you and that you can use some of these uh, techniques in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.